Hello everyone, my name is Sean. I am still the Crypto Smith. Thank you for coming back. If you wouldn't mind doing me an enormous favor and just click the like and subscribe if you wanna see more of this content. For that, I appreciate you all out there in the interwebs. I wanna bring you exciting news. I was playing golf today. That's not the exciting news. I'm playing golf. We're just about to finish up. I check my phone and I see that finally the decision is in. The big decision for the SEC versus Ripple case I couldn't be more excited. I came home. Honestly, I should be getting ready for bed right now, but I decided I have to do a quick video to let everybody know what's going on and to share my excitement with you out there who have all been waiting for this decision. This, in my opinion, is the biggest decision so far in the SEC versus Ripple case, probably by far. It's been a long time coming. So the SEC has literally spent zero time trying to prove that Ripple sold illegal securities in XRP. They've spent an enormous amount of time trying to hide these emails from the public and from Ripple's team. Now, finally, Judge Netburn came down today and said, sorry, denied again. You cannot use the attorney-client privilege claim on these emails. This is the fourth or fifth time now that she has demanded they turn the emails over to the Ripple team and they keep stalling. They keep stalling. Uh, they're making up excuse after excuse, and she did not hide her criticism of the SEC in this decision. Let's check the decision out real quick, and I'll tell you why I think she really couldn't hold back her dislike for the SEC. So this says, defendants argue that Hyman is not a client of the SEC's lawyers for the purposes of advice relating to an outside activity, such as the speech. This is the Ethereum free pass speech that Bill Hyman gave in 2018 and that we wanna see all the emails related to this speech and all the advice and different uh, forms that the SEC and their staff was providing to Bill Hinman before he gave the speech. And then he came out and said, oh, that was just my personal opinion. And everybody says, I, I don't think so. Uh, you had 63 different emails at the SEC coming to you, giving you advice uh, on how to give this speech and what to say. How could that possibly be your personal opinion? I feel the same way. Sounds pretty stupid. So they're already arguing that Hinman's not a client of the SEC's lawyers for the purpose of uh, advice to the speech. So the SEC retorts that the speech had to have been developed uh, as part of Hinman's official duties because the SEC staff who provided edits and feedback to the speech were prohibited from using agency time and resources to provide input on a purely personal errand. Okay, so they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. At oral argument, the SEC emphasized that the information Hinman received from the SEC staff while drafting and editing the speech would not have been available to him as a private citizen. Why? Because he was uh, the head of the corporate finance division at the SEC. It was only in the context of his employment that he was able to solicit the edits and feedback that he did. So this question is made unnecessarily complicated by the SEC's litigation tactics. This is where she starts to tear into him. You have to kind of read between the lines. The SEC had distanced itself from the speech to avoid discovery, and sought to preclude Hinman's deposition on the grounds that whatever he said in the speech had nothing to do with the SEC's position, and it was just his personal opinion. The hypocrisy, right? This is the H word everybody's going on about right now. For a judge to say this means, I don't like you. The hypocrisy in arguing to the court, on one hand, that the speech is not relevant to the market's understanding of how or whether the SEC will regulate cryptocurrency. On the other hand, that Hinman sought and obtained legal advice from SEC counsel in drafting his speech suggests that the SEC is adopting its litigation positions to further its desired goal and not out of faithful allegiance to the law, right? The, course, the court, however, need not resolve whether Hinman was a client of the SEC lawyers because the evidence established that the predominant purpose of the communications was not to provide legal advice. That is Judge Netbird from the top ropes body slamming the crap out of the SEC yet again, you can tell she doesn't like this. She knows this is a game they're playing. She knows this is a stalling tactic for them. They're going to lose this case. They know they're going to lose this case. There is no way that these emails are coming to light. The public is never going to see them. The SEC has already stated that if they lose this decision, they were going to uh, take it up the chain to Judge Torres in an appeal. So that's, I'm sure, what they're going to do just to stall even further. Judge Torres also appears she does not like the SEC's tactics, sees right through it. So as James K. Filan reported, the documents must be produced. This is what the judge said, again, for the fourth or fifth time. 
We're probably going to hear it for the sixth time once Judge Torres uh, denies their appeal. And then what are they going to do then? Right. I don't know. I don't think they have anything left. Right. They've not discussed how they think XRP is a security or that Ripple sold it illegally or that how XRP, even on the secondary markets, are, is sold as a security. They've lost this case. It's already over. Uh, but they're not giving up yet. They're going to drag this on as far as possible. Here's Jeremy Hogan, a great attorney uh, and, and another one who gives us updates all along the way. Says, wow, she used the H word, Jim, the H word. He's obviously replying to James. Congratulations to everybody out there who's still holding, right? This case, we, we knew that this was going to be a win for Ripple, but you're never really sure until you hear it from the judge's mouth. And we heard it from the judge's mouth today. So congratulations. Keep holding strong. This case is almost over. We're probably, six months seems like a long time, even though we just got this huge win, but it's probably going to drag out that long because that's how the law works. It just takes a lot of time. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the update. You guys have a great night. Go out and celebrate, and I'm going to get ready and go to bed. All right. See you guys next time.